actuaries are your people. Yeah. We are smart. We are smart enough to to understand the dynamics especially when it comes to risk and understand every business has risk. Sure. Right? And that's where we specialize in. We yeah. are good at that. And what makes us or separates us from the rest of the people is the fact that we are able to add um statistics into things right and not only statistics but also to account for mortality Ooh. and that's what makes us unique and that's that what that's what gives us the 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 upper hand against other careers the fact that we can use stats and mortality to to speak about risk you know i'm i'm laughing because <laughs> yeah you know i met this um this guy um you know who who is he's also an actual i think analyst in in one of the yeah. the, the the insurance company he deals mainly with insurance yeah. right <laughs> so we're having this argument and then then he says to me that he he start like he's talking to me but i can see, i can sense that he's actually you know cropping out stats extracting stats from me like he's asking me sure. questions and everything like that and it's like to me that you know i can somehow estimate your mortality rate and i was like chief you are here trying to tell me like my death rate like come on chief he was even saying to me that you know <laughs> with what the information that i have i can yeah. start to you know if i can create what do they call it like an insurance policy premiums and everything like that i, yes. I can because those information actually goes into how they decide or how they model yes. the, the prices that people pay yes. on premiums and everything like that and he was telling me that yes. if i go for insurance he can actually tell me what i would likely be premium or what the kind yes. of premium i'm going to pay based on yes. that and but he was insisting on telling me my mortality rate like who wants to hear about their death nah, no nobody does man no nobody, nobody does yeah so those uh, those are called uh, pricing actuaries right so i think there's 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 i think various scopes but the ones that i'm aware of that uh, seem to be dominating is is pricing and valuations right yeah. so you are either yeah but there's also marketing actuaries and yeah they they keep going on and on but the bigger ones is either you are doing pricing where you you're doing what you are saying where you are trying to estimate the price of something the cost of it right but in order to get to that cost you need to model um using your your mortalities your inflation your returns all of those things so those are called pricing actuaries and then there's those that will evaluate uh that money now i get uh, now you are paying and you are paying and now they want to see the value or the portfolio of that thing so they'll do a valuation of the whole company to see if it's sound or that department that does insurance there'll be those that are valuing that uh those prices that are keep, that keep coming in um or, or those premiums that keep coming in and keep coming in so Yeah so there's pricing and there's uh, there's valuating uh, actually so I belong on the valuation space Let's get into that like um the the actual spectrum like uh, when you graduate with actual science like you spoke about evalu- valuations right now uh, there is life insurance you know stuff like that can you take us through the different sort of branches or disciplines i don't have a weight but you get know what i mean right <laughs> this is my favorite part because this is the part that i didn't know so i think this is probably the part that's going to be of the most value to anyone watching this um so so what happens is the spectrum itself so you can be in life insurance you can be in investments you can be in short term insurance which entails you know car household insurance um you can be in pensions <clears throat> um i think our good friend mdu was here and he spoke at length about pensions yeah um you now banking um i hope i'm not and health i mean health health in a way falls into both life and short term but but it's a it's it's too big to 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 be to not be specified on its on its own so those are the big 
uh, you know, branches, like like in medicine, saying, you know, someone is an optometrist, yeah. uh, another one is a dentist. And then within those now, like for me, I mean, life insurance, someone is in short term. But within each of them, there is now, you can be in product design. So people that actually design, you know, those costs that you get, hi, sir. We're selling a policy that's going to pay you maybe, you know, one million. You know, if you die, it's going to get paid to your uh, beneficiaries and you pay this amount. Someone had to design that, right? So that's, we call that the product development space, the people that actually design that. And then after a product is, you know, designed, it obviously gets sold. Um, and then it has to be, you know, people have to be assessed, blah, blah, blah. But once it's sold... It has to be valued, right? Yes. Once it's sold, it has to be valued. So that's where my side of things come. We have to, on a day, on a maybe quarterly or yearly basis, value how much that policy is worth once someone has actually bought it. So that's that. So I've skipped, I've actually skipped another discipline. There's pricing. So after it gets designed, it has to be priced. Someone has to actually say, hmm, for this level of risk that we're taking, someone will have to maybe pay 500 rents per month. If we want to be able to afford these claims and, you know, cover our expenses and also make the profit that our shareholders want, we need to charge it this much. So there's, there's an entire team of actuaries that decided on that price. So I've spoken about the design, the pricing and the valuing, right? And then once, after it gets valued, someone at the Prudential Authority has to, I guess, assess to make sure that this company really does have enough assets to cover their insurance liabilities. So you can also be an actuary that works at the Prudential Authority, is what I'm trying to say. Instead of working at the insurance company, you can work at the Prudential Authority. So the Prudential Authority is the regulator. <clears throat> you can regulate insurance companies. And then I hope I haven't forgotten any other. Oh, so there's others that also manage capital. So their work is to make sure that, okay, if they have assets of 10 and and the valuators have valued that the liabilities are worth maybe seven. So how much additional assets do they need to have just as a buffer? you get it between you know just as a buffer so if the liabilities are seven the prudential authority will still say hmm maybe still hold two two more to just be that much more comfortable that you can you know pay off your claims if people claim in numbers today i see so normally have to hold assets that are equal to their liabilities plus some kind of some additional asset that we call the solvency capital. So I think the minimum, the absolute floor that anyone that wants to own an insurance company in South Africa, I think needs to have about 15 million rands. That's the absolute minimum additional uh, solvency capital that you need to have. So I, I think, I hope that I've covered. So you can be in those different kinds of disciplines, life, short term, health, blah, blah. And within them, you can be in product development, in pricing, in valuations, capital management, and obviously there's way more. I think those are just the core that are coming to mind for me right now. But I mean, you can you can do whatever, honestly. It's such a very huge value chain, huh? Yes, yes, it, it, it is. <laughs> and in banking? Um, I haven't really done any banking and i'd be lying like i'm going to rumble if i try to say anything about the actuarial role in banking because i think it's it's still new and personally i haven't really had any interest in it so i haven't i i don't know i imagine actually i don't imagine anything i haven't thought about <laughs> what it is that actuaries do <laughs> because i mean a whole thing you know growing thing happening in banking we even have a banking fellowship exam now it's 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 a growing area but i haven't tapped into it 
So let's say here's a student uh, who is a graduate in actuarial science and perhaps they're still thinking of where to actually get into, like from what you've listed. Uh, what sort of what sort of advice can you give them, to, especially in terms of growth, to say maybe start here, blah, blah, blah. Absolutely. So, so in, in, in whatever discipline you start, whether it's life, short-term investments, blah, blah, Whatever discipline you start, I would advise any graduate to to start with the technical stuff. So I would advise anyone to do the very core technical stuff that no one wants to do, the valuations, um, because that's where you get the first principle of, of all those numbers. That's where you actually see how all those numbers are calculated. So for me, that's one reason and the second reason is honestly that it just makes you that much more marketable. Um, that's just the honest truth. Um, having technical expertise just makes you that much more marketable because one, there'll always be a need to, 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 to value, to, to, to get to a value at the end of every financial year. And two, because it's so technical, when people get to a certain level in their careers, if they can leave it, they leave. So there's always opportunities in <laughs> there's always opportunities on the technical side of things that's just that um so for me that's what i always advise anyone that comes to me to say you know what do you think i should do i always say just try to get as much technical experience as you can in the first two years of your of your work and then after that you can get a feel of what you want i mean i have a friend that moved from life into short-term insurance it's a it's very I mean, it's it's fluid. You can move between them, especially because you can take the exam. So we need to take two specialist technical exams, which means you can take one in your actual area of, of practice and one in another before writing the very final applications exam. You know what I mean? So there's very there's a lot of ability to move, but to reiterate, wherever you start, I would say start with the technical.